Hey guys. So, uh, a thing happened. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably already know that I broke three of my fingers. <laughs> I've told this story like a million times by now, but I figured I would tell it a million and one times um, just because it's, it's a fun little story time and it's free content. <laughs> turning drama into content. We love to see it here. So my family does these annual float trips. We've been trying to go to a different one every single year. And this year was the fourth one that we've done, but I was only on the last three. Cause I, <laughs> I have a fear of like deep water and I am just not confident in my ability to swim. So I was like, eh, I don't think I really want to do that first one but then when they came back they were like oh it's so much fun and the water really wasn't that deep for most of it and like you should really come next time and so it is so the last three years i i love doing it i look forward to it so usually it's my family so me my siblings my mom and then my mom's best friend and her husband and stepsons and so the stepsons are around my age and so last year they were doing a rope swing and I was sitting in the raft. I was like, damn, that looks like so much fun, but I would be terrified to do that. But this year, leading up to the float trip for like a couple of weeks, I was like, okay, if they have a rope swing, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do the rope swing. Do not care how high it is. Do not care how deep the water is. You can doggy paddle. You can like swim if you need to. Like you're gonna be fine. <laughs> The height was fine, the water was fine. It was my ability to hold onto the rope <laughs> and keep myself up that was the issue. So we came up to the first rope swing because there were two of them on this river. So we came up to the first one and there was like a cliff leading up to it. It had a rope to get up to it or you had to go a long way around through trees to get up to it. So I was like, you know what, let me try pulling myself up on this rope. Cause it was one rope and then the other rope was long enough that you can grab onto that and then pull yourself up to the top. One of the boys stood at the bottom and then the other one was already up there. So I grabbed onto the rope. I tried putting my foot like on the ledge like I was being told to. The one up at the top was like, okay, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. So I was trying to do it, but I could not just like try and like pull myself up. I don't have upper body strength. <laughs> so I'm trying to pull myself up. It's not working. He tries and to like grab my arm and like try and help me pull myself up. That is not working. I keep fucking slamming into the wall. <laughs> this should have been my sign that this was a bad idea if I couldn't get myself up there. Me and the other boy, we walked all the way up and around and I was standing up there and so what the boys were telling me to do there were two knots and I was like okay hold on to the rope in the middle not like you know resting my hand on top of the knot no just in the middle I probably should have rested my hand on the knot because <laughs> I think that probably was part of my problem as well you know I'm like eh, I'm like scared to do it um but like people in the rafts down below were like cheering me on. He was like, you can do it, you've got this. And I was like, okay, just like, I'm like psyching myself out. And I think the brother had given me like a countdown. It's like, you just, you just gotta do it. You, you can't, the longer you stay up here, the longer it's gonna take you to just do it. So I jumped. The issue is that I held on for a hot second realized I could not hold on. So I'm like, you know, kind of like curled up into a ball. So my immediate reaction was to find land to not fall. So my legs drop and in doing so, all of my weight drops. That I did not realize was going to happen. So all of my weight drops, I cannot hold on anymore. And a split second after all of my weight drops, my hands slide and I let go. I think my hands like hit the knot 
on the way down and then I fell. In the video, my left foot hits the lower cliff as I fall down <laughs> and you can see the, the brother who was helping me. He was, oh, that was what I was talking about. With like not waiting long enough to like swing out because he, he kept telling me, he's like, okay, it's like a pendulum. So as soon as you're like all the way up, that's when you let go. Don't let go like halfway up. Don't let go as you're coming back. <laughs> let go when you're at the highest point. And that was my plan. I wasn't gonna let go. I wasn't really holding on by my palms. I was holding on by my fingers. <laughs> I cannot hold my body weight on my fingers. So I fell into the water and everybody was worried about my leg because that's all that they saw was my leg hit the cliff as I went down. And I was like, no, I'm fine. And as I was making my way back to the rafts, I realized, hey, my fingers hurt. And I wasn't entirely sure why, but as you know, I finally made my way to the raft, my fingers <laughs> were swollen and throbbing and starting to turn purple. It was starting to like bruise. Like I, I wasn't sure what I did. I don't usually injure myself. My mom and her friend were like, well, how do they feel? Can you still bend them? And I was like, yeah, I can, I can bend them, but they're kind of swollen and it felt like the skin was pulling. And I was like, I mean, I can still bend them, but like, you know, it's not, it's not great. And so then my mom was like, well, you probably just really sprained them. So I was like, okay, but this really fucking hurts. <laughs> and she was like, cause the water is cold. She's like, just put your hands in the water just to help like reduce the swelling. And so I tried putting them under the water, but because my hands were below my heart, the blood was still pumping down to my fingers. And so it hurt putting them in the water. And then I pulled them out and then it hurt even more pulling them out of the water. <laughs> I was one of the first ones to row. So I got like one round in and then I hurt my hands. So then I got to sit in the raft for the next several hours, not doing shit. <laughs> and granted this entire time, I had not taken any like Advil or ibuprofen, even though both of the mothers <laughs> had some packed, I just didn't think about it. So the rope swing happened right at noon. And I want to say, that we got done right around like 5, 36 ish. Um, and I was in so much pain. We were all like taking turns, changing out of, into dry clothes and stuff. And as I'm what, standing there waiting, I've got like my bag and shoes in my hands and I'm like <laughs> crying. Cause I'm like, oh my God, my fingers hurt so bad. And so then I had to have my twin help me like get clothes off. It felt shitty to need them to help me, but you know, it's like, I don't want to be in pain because I'm, again, crying in pain. So once we all got done and changed and we all kind of headed our separate ways to go eat food. And at this point it is eight o'clock by the time we go get food. We were at Burger King and I just got a shake. So I was like holding it, icing my fingers. I didn't have ice either. I'm just now remembering this. I didn't have ice on my hands while we were on the river and it wasn't until the car ride to get food that I was actually holding an ice pack. <laughs> but you know when we were, I got a shake, I was holding it and icing it and I cried like two or three times sitting there because I was in so much pain and eventually that's when I did take Advil. Eight hours after I hurt my fingers and my mom was like well we could like go to the emergency room, but you know, most they might do is just give you stronger pain meds. And I'm like, stronger pain meds? I need my cards. <laughs> <laughs> give me the meds! We didn't actually end up going to any like emergency room, urgent care or anything. We just went straight home. And by the time we got home, it was 9.30. So like, you know, it's understandable. I was in so much pain. I was like, oh, kind of want to. But since, you know, everybody around me was just like, okay, well, it just looks like a really bad sprain and they're not broken, then I should be okay. I want to say the next four days after, 
I was constantly like keeping ice on my fingers, but they kept over those like next couple of days, they kept getting more like bruised and purple and just like gross looking. And that should have been the sign that, hey, maybe this isn't just a sprain. Maybe you should get a check out. Eventually like the swelling went down a bit and it got to a point where I want to say maybe only five or six days after <laughs> the incident that I stopped icing my fingers all together because I was like, hey, they don't really hurt right now. So I went to a more like normal level of using my hands consistently. I'm left-handed by the way. So this sucks. <laughs> so about a week and a half later, I noticed that this knuckle was like, it wasn't like perfectly straight. It was kind of like slanted a little bit. Like it wasn't a whole lot, but it was enough that I could like tell the difference. I'm like, mm, this doesn't really look right. And I was also noticing that there was like a bump on the side of my knuckle that kind of felt like it could be a callus, but I knew damn well that there was not a callus on that finger right there. I mentioned it to my mom <laughs> and finally she was like, are you sure you didn't like just sprain your fingers and you didn't like break it? You're the one who diagnosed me. <laughs> You're the one who told me that, hey, you probably just sprained your fingers. I've never broken a bone before. I don't know what it's like. I don't know if my hands are broken. <laughs> so then I was paranoid and later, like I was doing something and I felt my knuckle pop and it wasn't like painful. It was just like a normal, like it was fine. You know, but it, my knuckle looked like it, like when it was slanted, it looked like it was like slightly more normal. So it's like, did I just like pop my knuckle back in place? And then my mom, we did this stupid DIY sprain that was making my sensory issues go absolute batshit. <laughs> and she was sending me articles about like how to tell if it's sprained or broken. And like a lot of them were saying, well, sometimes sprains and breaks look and feel pretty similar and it's hard to tell the difference unless you get them x-rayed. I was fucking paranoid. <laughs> I was like, okay, now I'm actually not sure if I broke my fingers or not. She's like, okay, you wanna go to urgent care? I was like, yes. So I went to urgent care the next morning, like as soon as it opened. So, you know, the nurses are like, oh, what happened? And I was like, oh, rope swing, couldn't hold my weight, dropped. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all my weight was on my fingers. So I went and we did the x-rays. You know you're fucked when the real life version of McSteamy walks in the room and goes, so what did you do? <laughs> so I told him rope swing, couldn't hold my weight, dropped all weight on fingers. And he goes just like straight face. He goes, yeah, you broke all your fingers. I'm not even joking. <laughs> and at this point, like, my mom and I are like laughing. She's probably just like, oh geez, my child, when she hurts herself, she really hurts herself. Uh, but I'm laughing because I'm in disbelief. Like, oh my God, I just broke my fingers. Like I, this is the first time I've ever broken anything before and I didn't realize that they were broken for a week and a half. And I was also just had like tears in my eyes because I was like, okay, I was right to question if they were actually sprained. And just, I felt like I was like validated. So he showed us my x-rays. Uh, I only have the ones for my left hand, which is funny because this is the more broken hand. But my middle finger has a full break. There's a chunk fully just like floating off to the side. The ring finger is almost a full break, like just a little bit more and it would have completely broken off. This one was just a really bad fracture, but he explained that the tendons in your fingers are actually stronger than the bone. So when I dropped, the tendons yanked and broke the chunks of my knuckles off. <laughs> yeah, I got these lovely little splints and tape. They have, they have little holes in the bottom to make it like breathable because it's plastic. Um, but that is not entirely breathable in summer when you're sweating. <laughs> so it just like, pools of sweat just kind of form in the plastic and it's gross. And so my fingers are constantly wrinkly, which is luckily not a sensory issue that I have, <laughs> but it's gross. <laughs> I hate talking about this 
just for the reason that I feel like I'm complaining about this and being all whiny when it's like there are people who have had worse happen, you know, but like I've never broken a bone before so I'm not, I'm not used to this sort of a handicap. It sucks. It sucks. Especially because I started really trying to get into like health and fitness like two weeks before this happened and now like I can't, I can't really do shit. So it's just, it, it really just like put a damper on I guess like my mental health and like how I was doing cause like genuinely I was like the happiest I'd been in quite some time cause I was like, I was working out, I was eating right, I was feeling better, I was seeing the changes and I was like, okay, I'm doing good. Cause it was kind of like on and off, but I was trying to stick to it. And then uh, this happened and it just kind of like derailed. I wasn't motivated to try and at least eat better. If I couldn't exercise, I could try and eat better, but I wasn't. And I was meaning to try and find different ways. Like if I had to constantly hit leg day, if I had to do like yoga or Pilates or you know, something that wasn't so like intense and didn't really need my hands. And I was like, okay, I can try something else. I can keep it going. I don't have to just like stop just because I can't use my hands. I can keep it going, but I just didn't have like the energy or enough motivation to just be able to do that. But recently I've been like, okay, it's been a week and a half with the splints. I've like gotten used to it. Again, my hands don't hurt. So I'm just like slowly trying to get back into like start with the eating and then, you know, once so I'm starting to kind of get that down, then we'll get back into movement. And once these come off, hopefully, you know, before school starts, um, then I'll start doing like workouts and maybe check out the school gym. And I find it kind of funny though, because, you know, I've been watching a lot of Snapchat videos of like gym memes. Cause I've been like, if I can't do it, then at least see people doing it and get motivated to do it. So then once I can, again, I can just hit the ground running with it. And I was seeing a lot of jokes about like, you know, you're having a good week and then you get an injury and then you lose so much progress. And you know, like I always thought of that in terms of like, oh, you needed a surgery or you like, I was gonna say, or you broke a bone. I broke my fingers. <laughs> Like, but like a bigger break, like, you know, you sprained your knee or, you know, something that made doing heavier lifting and like more intense exercise harder and, or just genuinely you should not be doing anything <laughs> while you're injured before you heal, right? And, you know, I was like, I get that, but like, I broke my fingers. That is an injury. It is affecting me negatively. <laughs> it counts. Yeah, it's just a lot of like, trying to like make sure like in my head that this is totally like valid. This is validated. This is like, it's okay to be upset about this. Again, it's also just with the mental thing of like, hey, others have it worse. <laughs> you need to stop complaining about this that I'm like, well, it's really not that bad. No, bitch, you broke your fingers. <laughs> it is that bad. You live and you learn. Like I genuinely, genuinely though, I am actually kind of glad that I broke my fingers in a way. Cause like on the one hand it is humbling, right? But also like I'm, it makes me feel that I'm like finally living you know, I was getting better. I was trying more things. I was trying to be better. I try new things. And accidents happen sometimes. I can't, I can't be completely mad about it. I broke my fingers because I was finally living and I love that. <sighs> okay, uh, I think, I think I'm done rambling for now. So, um, 
I almost went to clap my hands and I'm just now realizing that my outro might be a little funky to try and do with my hands. And that brings us to the end of the video. So if you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications for when I upload next. And until next time, I don't have an outro, so you're just gonna have to deal with a goodbye. <laughs>